looking a little earlier. Well, of course, if there were European elections, there'd be an awful lot of focus on UKIP because they tip the po they top the poll in the last election. So what might they be doing? What preparations are they making? Let's speak to their leader, Jared Batten. Hello. Hello Welcome. Uh, that would be quite a thing after the referendum if yeah. we are involved in the European elections, but the government is saying that is a very distinct possibility. So are you gearing up for oh, a European we, election? We don't want there to be European elections because that effectively means that we haven't left the European Union and it's unlikely that we will. So we don't want them, but it's my duty to prepare for it, which is what I've been doing now for some weeks. Um, we've already been recruiting candidates, we've been raising money, so if there is a European election we will fight all out in all 12 regions of the UK on the, on the pr proposition that if you want to leave the European Union you vote UKIP because we're the only party that actually genuinely stands for that. We stand for an unconditional unilateral withdrawal on our terms, not the EU's terms. And if you remember the reason that you had the referendum in the first place is because of the UKIP electoral threat and the best way of reintroducing that threat will be in the European elections which will again see us, I have no doubt, top the poll lots of UKIP MEPs who will then have a platform to argue for a genuine exit from the European Union. Plenty of governments in Europe know they're in for a very tough election in May, yeah. so there's a very good chance that UKIP, particularly given what's happened here mm. in Westminster, are going to pick up a number of votes. But it's a difficult one to plan for because there's no polling for the European elections. I mean, where well, do you channel your resources? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. You channel them everywhere because it's, it's a bit different from a... So how a, many are you putting forward? Oh, well, there's a, there is a full complement of 73 candidates in 12 regions. For example, London has eight candidates, eight MEP seats, other regions have seven, six, eight, ten, whatever. So we will blanket the whole country, it's not difficult to do, you've only got to find 73 <laughs> candidates, not like a general election with 650 candidates. We've got to find the money to fight that, which is what we're doing now. Um, and it's a lot easier to fight than a general election, and of course it's on proportional representation, and that message has got through to the electorate now over the years, that you get what you vote for in a European election, you get the candidates returned in the proportion that you vote, vote for them. Are you preparing for a legal battle as well? Because we don't know what mechanism the European Union would come up with. They may say we'll send some MPs from the House of Westminster to, to, to Brussels and Strasbourg to sit in, 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 in your place. So well, this what, is, what have you been told about that in, in Strasbourg? If I can just say a bit about the votes. The, the middle one puzzles me because the middle one says they first vote rejected a second referendum. The middle vote says that if, the par if Parliament votes for Mrs May's deal on the third attempt next week, OK, so we're leaving on the 29th of March then, but then they're asking for an extension until the 30th of June. Now, why would that be? That doesn't make sense because... There won't well, it be would any, be to get the legislation well, through. The, the, the Withdrawal Act already says that um, that they, you know, that, that, that makes there's provision there's a lot of legislation that, that goes with the well, Withdrawal Act. You've got to put it into yeah, law. But, but, but you could have still left the European Union because, as I've been arguing all these years, all EU legislation has been passed into Acts of Parliament or regulations. So it all stays in place. So there wouldn't be a problem that affects the European Union. It would just be a question of changing that legislation, however it needs to be changed. But what worries me about this second vote is that there's something more here in that the government is delay wants to delay until the 30th of June. That would mean that the current MEPs come to the end of their term in the, uh, early July, so we would stay in our seats. But what I'm wondering is if they're intending to pull something else out of the hat at the end of June and say, well, actual fact, we need yet another extension to Article 50, but in the meantime, we haven't taken part in the European elections. It's too late. Just OK, just a quick one. Uh, uh, at the last election, you had how many? 24? Uh, 24. 24 MEPs. It's been a, a distinctly rocky road, let's face it, for you since that election. Yep. You've now got how many? Seven? Seven. Seven. You don't talk to Nigel Farage, I know, but he's saying that he's going to be lobbying for uh, one of the countries to veto the extension next week. What are your seven MEPs doing within well, the Parliament? Uh, first of all, uh, Nigel made the decision that he was going to leave UKIP, and he's, he now says that he's going to he's join this other Brexit party, which doesn't really seem to exist except as a, as a registered name with the Electoral Commission. There's nothing else behind it. I, don't, I think him talking about lobbying the heads of state of other European countries is quite frankly just a PR stunt to get him in front of the TV cameras. Uh, you know, I wouldn't pretend that the heads of states of the other European countries are going to listen to me or my MEPs. I think their decision will be based on 
if, you, if the UK leaves, there's a big hole in the budget and somebody's got to pay that money and they don't want to. So I think the other, while they might be sympathetic to us leaving and might actually want, think it's a good idea for their country in the long run, in the short term, they won't want to have to pick up that shortfall in the budget. So they're unlikely to vote against an extension of Article 50, bearing in mind that it only takes one of them to dissent because it needs a unanimous decision. So I certainly hope that someone like Viktor Orban or the Italians uh, or maybe even the Spanish would actually say, no, let's get rid of the UK, they're more trouble than they're worth and actually do us that big favour. But I wouldn't put money on it. Chair Batten, good of you to come and talk to us. Thank you very much indeed.